This is what Sovol calls the SV05 Cubic, and you could see why. Let's have a closer look. The SV05 is the second most recent printer Sovol have released, being largely overshadowed by the most recent SV06, which by all accounts has been hugely popular. Released around May last year, I think it has taken me a while to get to this one, but now I have, here it is. The SV05 Cubic is appropriately named, as you can tell, it's literally a cube. It follows the design of the Ender 5, I mean, basically the frame is an Ender 5, but this is direct drive. This brings it up to the same spec as the more recently released, and if I may say so, slightly odd, Creality Ender 5 S1. That is a strange printer for sure, with its weird hot end. And the ducts, they, they just look weird to me. But this SV05 comes with the Titan Aero style hot end combination, which has become a sort of standard across the more recent Sovol printers, SV06 not included. Uh, this is the same design as the SV01 Pro users, this is the same as the SV04 IDEX users, and make no mistake, this hot end is an absolute workhorse. It might not look fancy compared to some of the more recent designs you may have seen on other printers, but I have never ever had one of these block without it being entirely my fault. Um, well, until now, but that's a story for the end of this video, so stick around for that. Before we continue, I will mention that Sovol have sent me this printer free of charge, and not in exchange for anything in particular. I also think it's worth pointing out that in the interests of transparency, that Sovol are, as of recently, a channel sponsor through Patreon, as indeed anyone can be, including you, link below. I appreciate all my patrons, including Sovol, and obviously having patron enables me to do some very strange stuff, as I think I pretty much unofficially reinvest all the patron money at the moment into buying things for videos like this. Uh, but anyway, my point is that you should not blindly trust me or make your purchase decisions based on what I tell you to do, if indeed... I do tell you too, my reviews are more like specs and teardowns, and that is actually for a good reason and always has been. I try to minimise my bias for companies that I work with and bias for companies that I like. Of course, I am going to prefer companies that I work with. It makes perfect sense. That out of the way, how does one of these cubic things work anyway? Well, if you already have a printer, then statistically it's almost 100% likely to be a bed slinger. That might change by the end of next year, I, I don't know, but the ubiquitous Ender 3, the Prusa Mark 3, literally every other printer in the last N years, not you, uh, has been a bed slinger. So it's quite a treat when, as a reviewer, I get something else to try. This style is known as a bed dropper, I guess. Um, I think that's what people call them, and that is because imaginatively, the bed drops down as you print. It does that one layer at a time. It's just exactly the opposite of what a bed slinger does with the gantry. Other features on this machine include the traditional style four-line LCD display and encoder setup. Now don't knock it, This I find this, when you have a lot of printers, you, you tend to um, be less impressed with fancy looking things and you just want to uh, you just want to start the print, and I find this a lot easier than, say, the Ender S1 interface, and you, you don't get silly messages like, like this. Moving on, there is a slimline power supply on the side, a side-mounted reel holder, and a reverse Bowden setup, which I don't like much more on that later. How's that for personal opinions? And not a lot else, unless you count the storage underneath, so long as your prints don't exceed 200mm tall or so. In fact, even at the full height, you've still got some storage underneath to keep your tools in. It's not... I suppose you could print something out for that. The SV05 is pretty bare bones by today's standards, but at a cost saving of quite a lot compared to the Ender 5 S1, the bare bonesness of it is hardly surprising. Of course, this style of printer has more parts by weight, with the extra frame around it, so it's got to cut costs if it wants to compete with the very budget-oriented bed slingers. Those are all really cut down to the absolute minimum number of parts in, in terms of the frame and the design. Uh, of course, they're starting to be a bit more quality-focused nowadays, but there's still a lot less aluminium on those machines. Print quality is actually fine on this printer. I, I don't plan to hugely redo the work other reviews have. I've come in late to the game and there's already reviews on this printer, quite a lot of them. So 
I don't see any reason to redo that. But in short, print quality is supposed to be better and bed leveling works fine. As you can see, it has no issues with the bed leveling test. I also checked for squareness on this printer because I'm inherently suspicious of the gantry drive system. What with it being linked to the, the actual frame of the printer? It seems fine. Of course, as always, you get the Sovol standard of filament change um, functionality, which means it works. You'd be surprised how many printers out there ignore filament change commands. It is more than zero, a lot more than zero. Yes, even new ones, even new ones being released now are still ignoring filament change commands. I, I know. The filament change command works perfectly, as you can see on this Nakosan gingerbread house card, which I printed before Christmas. Yes, I have been testing the SVO5 for a while. To do filament change, you just choose the script in Cura, like I'm hopefully showing you on screen. Now, the main draw for bed droppers is, as I already mentioned, that the bed does not move back and forth. And apart from some vague mumbling about mass and artifacts, this means that you can film some really amazing time lapses on this machine. I'm sure you'll agree that that is fabulous. Here's the thing, though. This front bar here, um, what does it actually do? It turns out not a lot. If you think about what provides the rigidity to the frame? It is the sides of the frame, with the gantry being another solid bar riding over the top of it. The front bar there effectively has to do nothing. Otherwise, if it did do anything, it, if, it, if it competed with the gantry, it would cause more problems. So it's not needed. Go on, argue with me in the comments, but proof of the pudding, I took it off. With that front bar removed, you really can stick the camera into the right place where you need it and unleash the time lapses. All the time lapses. I'm sold, seriously, on the time lapses. This stuff is going on Instagram. Oh, by the way, here's the noise data for the printer, if you're interested. Let's talk about the bed. It's sturdier than I expected, actually. I was thinking that the way it was mounted would cause it to flex while printing, but if you think about it, it's no different to the flex you would get on a bed slinger with the springs. Beds aren't really that uh, rigid at the best of times. In fact, it's better that way for when the hot end crashes into the, into the bed. If it has a bit of flex, that's usually a good thing. Uh, the bed is also reinforced by these arms that you have to fit on assembly. That, of course, helps it not sag over time or, or bend. It's a pretty good way to mount it, I think. I bet when I open up the board housing, there will be inside a Creality 4.2.7 silent board with SMD drivers. Um, that's the one from the Ender series of printers. Close enough, I wasn't far off. There is not much else to say about the specs on this printer, to be honest. Everything is pretty standard, even the screen. There's there's no filament sensor, uh, but I think you could put one here if you want to add one. I'm not bothered. So I have one major gripe with this machine, and that's loading it. You see, this tube here is a reverse Bowden, and it goes all the way down to the spool holder on the side here. What that means is to load and unload the printer, you have to put the filament in here through this whole tube here, and that's fine. But when it gets to the lever here, and you have to get it down a tiny hole there, uh, that is a fairly easy operation to do on most Sovol machines. And with the same extruder. In fact, the Titan Aero is one of the easiest extruders out there to load, in my opinion. But when you add this tube, it suddenly isn't. Now it's time for a short story. I decided at this point in my infinite wisdom, since I had the extruder apart for reasons unrelated to the review, if you must know I was trying to look at why it was so hard to load, it's complicated. But while it was apart, I thought, why not put this bimetal heat break in that Sovol had sent me previously for use in the SV01 Pro? I never used it. And it's the same extruder, so I, I did it. And it's pretty easy to do. You just have to unscrew the old one and put the new one in. But after I did this, I noticed that prints were just failing halfway for no good reason. I don't know if I have footage of that, but if I do, I'll show it. But the nozzle would just appear to block. And on further investigation, when I disassembled it to try and find out what the answer was, um, it wasn't really obvious. It was not heat creep, which um, 
I'm expecting you're all thinking it was heat creep, I did as well. It's also not the whole not using boron nitride heat paste thing. I, I would have used some if I had any. It's, it's not actually that easy to get here. Uh, if you know anywhere that sells it, comment below. No, the reason this was happening was really obvious. If I show you it from this angle, do you see that the holes don't really line up that well? And I think what was happening was that the PLA was either jamming because of that or worse, it was filing off bits of aluminium and that was blocking the nozzle. So the solution was just to drill that hole a bit bigger and I used a countersunk bit thingy to remove any burrs or sharp edges after that and that resulted in this, which I know it's slightly lopsided because the countersink bit stuck out too far to go in straight, but it does not matter. The hole is now big enough and smooth enough and away we go. There really shouldn't be a downside to this bodge and I haven't seen one. Uh, the printer has been printing perfectly since for quite a long time. If there is a moral to this story, then I guess it's twofold. Firstly, don't assume things. It would have been very easy to just yell that the heat break was rubbish and it was causing heat creep and it was faulty and it would have been easy to put the old one back in if I, if I hadn't broken it. And most importantly, secondly, this goes for pretty much any DIY modding that you might plan to do on any machine and that is everything goes smoothly until it doesn't. 9 out of 10 heat break changes even on this machine, probably work fine. You've signed up for the possibility of all 10 outcomes. You have to be able and willing to deal with that possibility. Otherwise, leave your machine alone. Don't try and change the heat break unless you are willing to perhaps do some remedial work that the manufacturer may not have seen coming. Even if you're using stock parts, like this was the official Sovol heat break that they sent me, tolerances are a thing. Factories cannot test for every possibility. Okay, end of rant. I hope you enjoyed the story anyway. Um, that's mainly what it was. It doesn't really have a lot to do with the review. Um, unless, of course, you're planning on changing the heat break just in case. I do actually recommend changing the heat break. I, I know that goes completely against what I've just said, but first of all, it looks really cool and shiny. And why wouldn't you want a really cool and shiny heat break? But secondly, even in the outside chance of a problem like I had, the fix is actually very simple if you know what the problem is. And thirdly and finally, you can then open up higher temperature printing options, which a cubic shaped printer like this is frankly screaming for. You could do ABS, nylon, I mean, even just PETG. If I'd done this sooner, it would be the printer I'm using to print the ABS parts for the Voron video that you may have seen a couple of weeks ago, because turning this frame into an enclosure would have been relatively trivial, I think. So there you have it. I suppose it's time for some kind of summary. The Cubic is a different type of printer to what I usually get and it is nice to see options like this on the market and it has its uses, especially for anyone who's involved in any kind of creating a video content, as I already said, and I think this is its huge draw. The bed doesn't move, mounting a camera and lights in front of it is just so much easier and you can have a permanent fixture and, and just do your time lapses. It's as easy to film as a Delta in fact, but it's cheaper than a Delta. I don't think I have much more to say on the SV05, so over to you. What do you think? Do you have a cubic printer? If you do, then I'm curious why you chose it, and what do you think of it? If you don't have a cubic printer, would you buy this one? Again, why? Why not? And I will see you next time. Thank you for watching.